Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. And I'm THD. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of King's Quest 1, the quest for the crown. I figured since last year, roughly about the same time, we had Space Quest, um, that was Hell Dragon's pick, this time we'd cater to my ever-growing list of needs and do something more medieval or fantasy-esque. This is not actually uh, a version made by Sierra. This was made by AGD uh, Interactive, which mm, have been yeah. known for you know doing a lot of VGA uh, remakes of uh, more classic Sierra adventure games. They don't do that anymore, though, but they are making their own original products, uh, which you can find if you just Google around for a little bit. Apparently, this was the first fan remake ever, at least complete-wise, and the first to ever include a voice pack. Like Helldragon said, they also remade King's oh, Quest 2 and 3, and they're all free really? if you want to play them for yourself, so uh, feel free to uh, check the video description for the site link. Activision has been surprisingly okay with uh, letting these fan remakes and ports and whatever exist, so hey, more power to them. Well, if they called it like King's Quest Project M, maybe Nintendo would have a thing or two to say about it. Yeah, that's true. That's not really working out that well, is it? Now, if you've seen the Steam train runs of like King's Quest 5 and 6, you will probably know who Graham is. He's not a king just yet. Oh, no. No, he's more like uh, uh, Duke Graham or... Lad Graham or something like that. He's got like a Robin Hood kind of hat going on, though. Yeah, yeah, he's just a knight at this point in time. He's pretty underdressed for a knight when you think about it. Well, you know, knights don't have to wear suits of armor. I am at your service, my king. Now that is actually the voice actor for Graham from King's Quest 5 and 6, Josh Mendel. He came back to voice him for the fan remakes. Granted, his voice clips make it sound like he was doing them over the phone, but uh, hey, it's a fan remake, it's the fault that counts. Uh, why does it sound like they couldn't get him in, like, a studio? He didn't ha I guess he didn't have the equipment for that kind of thing, because I know about, say, have, like, some voice actors, they've got, like, specific equipment to kind of, you know, remove, like, the sound bugs, you know, at the end, things like that, so I don't know. Well, some voice actors do their work over the phone using a professional setup. I know Mike Pollock does that. can this kingdom be restored to its former glory? King's Quest 1 is basically a very simple game. You know, go around, find these treasures, uh, you know, come back, because this guy's about to die. He's like Ice King, and he's about to croak. There is actually a proper remake of King's Quest 1, and uh, I think it was either a later version of the original game or the official remake itself where the Quest for the Crown subtitle came in and they attempted to, like, establish some kind of proper continuity between the King's Quest games. I know. In the original game, you could find the sacred treasures in any order. So you could go like shield, uh, chest, uh, whatever the third one was, mirror. But uh, here we have to find them in a set order, which is mirror, chest, shield. So <laughs> that uh, that turns down the uh, Metroidvania aspect of the King's Quest. Yeah, kind of wish it was like crown, shield, cup, sword. But uh, I am a bit of a nightmare enthusiast. So. I'm sorry if you can't hear me, I'm a bit distant. I'm, over I'm throwing my voice, that's what's going on. Please don't croak, sire, while I'm gone. You know these point-and-click games, they can take a while if you don't know what to do. Finally, that asshole is gone. <laughs> the crown is off center. why is it doing that? You have disabled dead ends. The game will be fully playable from beginning to end. Yeah, this is the uh, Go to Hell Sierra mode. Start from the beginning. Some of their uh, earlier adventure games, uh, it has been possible to uh, do things in a way where you accidentally fuck yourself and you can't complete the game. I don't know why you have to turn it on or off in this version. You should just have it off, like, period. Like, there's no reason to support that unless you want a really authentic experience for some reason. They're being respectful to the original source material. I like that it's a choice instead of just one or the other, you know? Converse with anybody. They ignore you, Sir Graham. Oh, he's a sir. Okay. Yeah, he's a knight. Yeah, don't walk forward into that boat. <laughs> That's the very first thing I did when I was testing out the game, and uh, the lake monster or the moat monster is not the most kind of lizards. Yeah, just like all the other Sierra games, it's stupidly easy to kill yourself and make Graham appear to be a complete idiot who has no sense of where the fuck he is spatially. Now, there is a lot of nice music in this fan remake, but uh, most of the scenes will have like ambient noise, birds chirping, etc. I'll give you a tip right off the bat. Don't try and interact with the rock from the front. Push it from behind. Otherwise, I think it can roll onto you and kill you. you Fucking really? A rock? Oh, a pebble on my shoe! Ow! Oh, oh, I better expire now. I'm going for a full point run here. Intricately carved dagger in the hole. 
Now, I do like how they do have uh, narration for all of the, uh, you know, voice narration for everything you can interact with. It really does make it feel like one of those later uh, kind of games. I kind of wish it was more like a... a yeah, well, I mean, they had to get what they could, because this is a fan this remake a for free, obviously. So, you know, it, the guy here does an adequate game. enough job. <laughs> He's trying to shit-talk the narration, right? <laughs> elfish dagger of great antiquity. The runes say Melon, which, as we all should know, means friend. Oh, it says plus one on the side. There's an enormous oak tree growing here. Uh, I want to climb it. Reaching up into the sky. There are elves making cookies in the trees. You're not really sure what that's all about. Its trunk seems to be about ten feet around, and the thick, sturdy branches look like they. Can Having seen the original, uh, I haven't played this, obviously, but um, the original game is very sparse in comparison in terms of the graphics, you know, for the time. So I'm glad how, uh, with all the areas in this game, they filled it out a lot more. It really feels like you know you're in a forest and there's like actual greenery and surrounding things like that. It does feel out very nice. I, I forget whether it was this or King's Quest V where they like hand drew the backgrounds and then scanned them in, but uh, God, I just love this graphical style of adventure games. It may be a bit bitty and bitey in terms of like the pixels, but uh, I don't know, it's got a very nostalgic charm to it. Yeah, yeah, I really like VGA graphics too. They hit that nice sweet spot for me in terms of, you know, they look better than the older ones, but at the same time they're not as complex and they're not... They're not you know, super focused on their realism and things like that. They uh, they feel really comfy, is what I'm trying to say. But that's nostalgia, I guess. It is very easy to fall off this uh, massive set of tree branches here, by the way, so walk carefully. Fortunately, if you fall off the tree, you won't die, as shown here. Well, that's one rib gone. Let's get rid of the other 12. How very Looney Tunes of the game. No, let's uh, let, uh that save that save never happened. No thanks. It's not the fall that kills you; it's the embarrassment. Oh, you got cute little titles for all of your uh, you know, save games. Well, I was um inspired to do adventure games in the first place thanks to the Steam Train runs of certain games like Leisure Suit Larry and you know King's Quest and Space Quest. So I, f I thought I'd take after Ross in this regard. The water is not. I wasn't clicking on the water; I was clicking on the pebbles. Don't get your pants wet, Graham. Pebbles. That's a weird way of pronouncing Graham. It's like a graham cracker. Now, there is actually a wolf on this particular screen, and it's random, so uh, if he appears for you, turn around and run the fuck away, and he is very, very fast. I hate random encounters. Mm -hmm. There's a, a few of those in this game, and uh, it's quite annoying, because sometimes you'll need a character to appear, but it won't be there yet, so you have to kind of, like, cycle through screens in order to uh, get them to appear. Now, another thing about the later uh, King's Quest games is that not only you had to do all this, you had to often do it on a timer. King's Quest 4, in particular, was really bad about this, because you basically had two days to finish the game where you were fucked. I mean, in-game days, obviously, but still. Wasn't there a timer in free as well, if I'm remembering correctly? It's sort of, like, uh, you were underneath that evil wizard, and he, like, goes out and goes to the store, I guess. And he gets some, like, do they have, like, wizard smokes or something like that? I'm off to get a pack of wizard smokes and some evil tea. Listen, I need a five-hour energy. Don't touch my shit when I'm gone. But, uh, while he was gone, you know, you had to do stuff, to uh, be before he came back, otherwise he'd kill you. Tree. It may have just seemed like I was dicking about in an empty screen there. I was cycling through the screens, like I said, trying to get an elf to appear. And when he wouldn't appear, I thought, fuck it, I'll just go up and accomplish this thing here. Inscribed on the inside of this empty ceramic Helpfully bowl telling you what the bowl does. Oh, this bowl is, uh... More than average, I assure you. Astonishment. Something begins to bubble up from the bottom of the bowl. Full of delicious pea the bowl soup. Is filled with a hot, savory stew. Now let's actually see what the stew's made of. This large ceramic bowl is now filled with a savory beef stew. Interesting, because I wasn't carrying any beef products whatsoever, but then again, it did materialize from nowhere, so maybe it will feed a hungry woodcutter's wife or something uh, along those lines. It's like a magic hungry man's bowl. There's that fucker. You see a cute little elf. Hey, don't make this weird. <laughs> Let's attempt to interact with the elf. The elf is impressed by your friendliness. Every Do not fondle the elf. <laughs> the elf decides to reward your social cues. He <laughs> reminds me of that guy with the English version of The Office. <laughs> Maybe it's just the haircut. May it give ye as much entertainment as ye has given me this day. You talk to me. This is the best day of my life. 
Yeah, I love how uh, in these earlier games they just kind of give you shit because you talk to them. It's like, they just needed a friend this whole time. That, that is a magic ring. If you put it on, I believe it makes you invisible for a short amount of time. We won't actually be using it, but I thought I'd just, you know, fill you in on what it does. A lot of the earlier uh, um, King's Quest games, and, you know, Space Quest in particular, they took a lot of really direct inspiration from fantasy stuff. That's obviously, you know, from The Hobbit, things like that. Oh, yeah, good point. Oh, and you get it from an elf as well. Oh, it's all coming together. There you go. Oh, wolf screen. Keep moving. The wolf screen? Is that what we're going to call it? You have encountered an It's the well screen. screen. Watch out. Giant stone well appears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to it, you know. This is the first thing you should do when you encounter an, like, a medieval-style well. Get in the bucket and lower yourself down. To slowly descend. <laughs> I'm sending that ground down the well all the way down. Now I'll just hide out here for <laughs> Evil can't find me if I'm in a well. Finally, some privacy. All right, now we're going to take the dagger that we found in the hole and cut the rope. I really should have thought about this. I was actually trying to click on the bucket, but I guess examining the wall works too. Slick and slimy to be climbed. But you work your triceps. You manage to take the bucket. You place the bucket, not knowing where you place the bucket. That's always a good position to swim in. <laughs> Straight down. <laughs> My land's working great. Now, you do have a set amount of oxygen here, so uh, I would make it to the top left as fast as you can. And uh, don't make my mistake, once you get to the top left, click on the land to get out of the water. He won't do it automatically. Scream is kind of stupid, admittedly. Oh, sweet life-giving oxygen. Sweet life-giving land. Talk to the water. How do you feel about this? You don't need to take water with you, but uh, it is advisable. So uh, we're going to save here, because uh, as the save will tell you, danger is ahead. So it's otherwise a good idea to take the water and thus absolutely necessary. Shut up, Heldrake. Just sand. <laughs> Greed and scaly, the dragon is massive. This is a relative of yours? Ugh, maybe, I don't know. I, I tend to not keep track of them. <laughs> what are you saying, Tom? All hell dragons look alike? Yeah, yeah. Bastard. Look sharp and deadly. His gun is huge and impressive. His katana is sharp and expensive. Now, uh, he is guarding the magic mirror, so we're going to have to tread carefully here. There's a couple of ways we can defeat him. You can take the coward's way out and throw the knife at his like his bonds, or you can chuck the uh, the bucket of water at him. Yeah, who knows he shrivels up in water. Ah, oh, no, I'm slightly damp. Oh, that's mildly annoying. Ah! Face, dousing his fire. Don't get too close, by the way, otherwise he will breathe fire at you. Oh, he's trying to turn over. I always hate when that happens. Oh, that beautiful VGA graphic smoke. Unable to defend itself with anything more than harmless clouds of steam, the dragon rolls aside the granite boulder and slinks off. I love this. He just kind of slinks off because now he's pathetic. And then he gets beat up by all the other dragons back home, I assume. Uh, I'm so embarrassed, I'm going to abandon my sacred charge of guarding this magical mirror. Yoink! And that is one sacred treasure. See, if you look in the mirror, you'll find the uh, Philosopher's Stone in your pocket. The Magic Mirror actually features in future King's Quest games. I think in King's Quest 6, it's what gives Prince Alexander the notion to go find Princess Cosima in the, I think it's um, the Land of the Green Isles. And there's another version for it uh, I'll mention next time. Indeed. See you next time for more King's Quest.